going on guys? Dan Watson, LearningCameras.com, and I'm recording this right now on the Sony RX100 Mark IV, so you can see how the quality looks like. But, you know, overall it's a pretty good camera. The body is pretty well built. I will say there's a couple weak points in the uh, flash mount and in the battery compartment that worry me. I've already kind of damaged the battery compartment a little bit, so um, those are some things that I did want to worry about. But, you know, overall the design is not too different from the Mark III, and so we're going to see a very consistent thing on there. You still do have your pop-up flash, and you have a pop-up electronic viewfinder too, which thankfully is a little bit improved. So much better results on the viewfinder. And it's going to be the same 20 megapixel sensor that we're used to. And overall, again, the camera's not a bad camera at all. So we're going to take a look at some of the specs and uh, take a look at the quality of the images and see what we have. There are quite a few things if you do shoot video. And if we do have 4K recording, but it's only up to about five minutes, and you do get the full pixel readout with Sony's new XAVC-S format, which gets you up to 100 megabits per second. But keep in mind, you need to have a Class U3 card for this camera in order to utilize that 4K recording. You also now have ND filters, which is great, but the um, S-Log recording is, you know, it's nice to have, but honestly, I find it completely unnecessary in a camera like this, just because of the amount of editing it takes in order to get the footage back. Now what I am disappointed in is a complete lack of any microphone input and I will say that RX100 purchasers are probably going to be way more interested in better audio without using separate recorders than S-Log2, but that's my opinion. The autofocus was also pretty fast and accurate so I had no issues locking on my target. Unfortunately we are still missing a touch screen and on a camera such as this with limited dials and buttons it just took me a lot longer to dial in my settings than with my Canon EOS M that does have a touch screen. Thankfully Sony does allow you to use a front ring in order to control settings but for manual shooters out there it still is very difficult to adjust aperture, shutter, and ISO very quickly. Now on the imaging side of things, the RX100 Mark IV is no slouch and just like the last model, you really can't find anything on the market with images this good that still has a chance of fitting in your pocket. Simply put, you know, if you need something small and unassuming, the RX100 is really the best of the bunch. It does have a new electronic shutter which is capable of 1 thousandth of a second shutter speed, so bright lights are no longer going to be an issue like they were with the Mark III because with an f1.8 max aperture and a 1 thousandth of a second max mechanical shutter speed, sometimes you could leave your images overexposed with those settings. The screen also rotates completely upside down enabling a selfie mode which when combined with the built-in Wi-Fi and NFC really makes this a good substitute for your crappy phone camera. So overall, you know, it's not that this camera is a bad camera in any sense of the imagination. And what I want to reiterate is that this is the best camera that you can get in this kind of size point. If you want something that's going to fold up and uh, lock away to get into your pocket or a small, you know, it's not great in the pocket, but you can put it in your pocket and uh, into a very, very small size. This is really the camera that's going to be there for you. If you don't mind something just a little bit larger or can go into a, a little bit more of a mirrorless type system uh, that's going to be an APS-C size sensor, you're going to see a little bit better results. But once again, you are not going to have that in this kind of size. You're going to have a, probably a lens that's going to stick out and not come back into the camera like this and fold up so neatly. So that's, that's my take on it. You know, for $950, bucks, I do think it's just a little bit overpriced. And I think that Sony's really capitalizing on the fact that they've done something that there really is no competition in this kind of size point. And that is something that they're really using to their advantage. So, you know, take a look at the results for yourself and make your own decision. If you, if you need something as small and compact and you really just want uncompromised quality in the smallest physical size you can get it, that's going to be the camera for you. Now, stay tuned. we got some more videos coming up. we got the A7R Mark II coming in, so check out that review when it comes in. It's another one from Sony. It's going to offer some stunning results. If you need video features as well, i got to say this is the best video camera on the market today in this kind of size range especially. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.